Hello, I'm currently reading a book called Influence, the Psychology of Persuasion. I'm on chapter four, it's entitled Social Proof, and it talks about how we as humans look to others and their behavior to decide on how we act as humans. And uh, it's kind of autopilot for any situation. There's something going on, you look around, see how people are acting, and then from there you can decide what the situation is like. <clears throat> One example of this is when you're watching TV, often you hear what they call canned laughter. The canned laughter is a form of social proof. So when you're watching the show, the canned laughter makes you believe that it is funny, even though the material not, might not be that funny. So this has been used by producers for a long time now, and it shows that, it pr the statistics prove it, that when canned laughter is used, the ratings go up and people think the show is funnier even though it's pretty obvious that it's canned laughter and it's fake people still believe that the material is more funny it used to be back when there was operas and they didn't have a laugh track they had what they called clackers the clackers were people that were paid to go to the opera watch the show and during the end of a certain performance or, sh or skit they would clap more loudly than the rest of the audience and by social proof the audience would think they were supposed to clap and everyone would begin clapping more uh, excitedly because of the clacker. And these people were paid to do so, and it was well known that the clackers were there to clap. <coughs> so uh, it's pretty interesting how we as humans look to others to decide on how we are supposed to act. Uh, another example the book gave was talking about publicized suicides. After a suicide was publicized, accidents and deaths rose by about a thousand percent. Uh, car crashes, airplane crashes, and all kinds of other things. Uh, the, funny, the funny thing was, it only, uh, the increase only happened in cities where the suicide was publicized, and the people that uh, decided to commit suicide either by wrecking their car or, you know, crashing the plane they were, uh, they, they were flying, did so a lot of the times kind of uh, more intentionally. Instead of normal car wrecks, these people were more likely to die than a normal car wreck when there wasn't a big suicide publicized. <clears throat> Another funny thing is uh, we look to the same type of people we are. So these suicides also match the age group that the person whose suicide was publicized. So if a young person killed themselves, then for the next week, the suicide and death rate of young people would jump by a large number. So I thought that was pretty interesting. It's called the Werther Effect, and uh, it was discovered by, by, a, uh, by a man who wrote a book about a man who was committing suicide that sparked a wave of suicide so powerful it was banned in some countries. <coughs> and uh, so that's where the Werther Effect name comes from. David Phillips studied suicide statistics from 1947 to 1968 and found that within two months after every front page suicide story, an average of 58 more people than usual killed themselves. That's a pretty big number and it's pretty interesting, I think. Uh, another thing that they also studied was that violence also begets more violence. For example, uh, 1973 to 1978, he studied, he studied heavyweight championship fights. If the white person lost, then there was more crimes on white. If the black person lost, there was more crimes on the black person following, following that big publicized fight. So uh, it's really interesting, and it reminds me of when I left Fast and the Furious after the movie theater. Everyone was peeling out and burning out their cars because they just got done watching the movie, and apparently that's what they do. So knowing, knowing about the Werther effect and uh, so what they call social proof, how do you think this affects our news and our society? That's what I want to know. Uh, here's an example that I'll give you. 94% of terrorist attacks are not Muslims. Latinos lead uh, in terrorist attacks. According to the FBI, from their own statistics from 1980 to 2005, Muslims only did 6% of the terrorist attacks, while 94% were other groups, the largest group being Latinos at 42%. So uh, why do we hear Muslim, Islamic extremists all over the news? It's very disproportionate to the reality of things. And the social proof is people look at the news and they just accept it as reality and think that Islamic terrorism is a huge thing, when in reality 
It's one of the smaller groups uh, that commit terrorism. Jews even came in at 7%, uh, a, a percent above Muslims at only 6%. So uh, just wanted to know what you guys think, uh, how the media and the news affects uh, our, social, our social beliefs and society. Uh, if you want to learn more about uh, the influence, the, the book that I'm reading, you can buy it. The, the links on the side. I'll also put the link to the uh, FBI statistics and the article regarding how 94% of terrorist attacks are not Muslim. Interesting.